Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you all had a wonderful week. Mine was interesting to say the least. Uh, pretty much just really busy, but I'm sure you guys are all busy doing your own things too, so it's not much of an excuse, but it's something. Um, today we're sporting the smiley face sweatshirt because uh, one of us has to be happy around here and uh, it's not me. Uh, part of that has to do with some camera technical difficulties but we sorted those all out so hopefully we should be uh, smooth sailing from here. Last week we were talking about framing the shot so I thought this week we could talk about more of the technical side of things. Uh, some of those camera functions on the camera I've been using. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so here we have our lovely camera, high quality. Um, it's a JVC. Um, it's on loan from SUNY Geneseo. Uh, there you can, now you can see that. So uh, it's not mine, but thank you Geneseo. Coming in clutch. Um, I looked up the full name of this because I wasn't quite sure what model this was and apparently it is <clears throat> a JVC GYHM 100U camcorder. So it's it's got a nice ring to it, I think. Let's start by going over some of these functions, shall we? So as you can see, we have a lot of buttons. Um, this opens up to reveal some more functions for you. Uh, let's start from the very top though. You'll notice that the camera is, lens is closed and that's good because we're not using it right now. And keeping it closed just helps to prevent dust, particles, and other dirt from getting in. So whenever you're not using it, you always want to keep that closed to protect it. To switch that open on the opposite side right here is, uh, see, opens it. So I'll keep that open for now. Next button or switch over is, this says ND filter, and that stands for neutral density. So we would use this when we're going outside. If it's super sunny, you're going to want to switch that to on, and I'll demonstrate this later, but basically that blocks out some of the light intensity um, on those super sunny days. But if you're filming indoors or if it's really cloudy, you'll probably want to switch that to off because there would be no need for that. Um, next button over. This is your focus and zoom. Um, right now it's set to focus and you would do that by adjusting this dial right here. And I will definitely demonstrate that later because that's a very crucial aspect of filming, um, being in focus. As well as zoom, you don't want each shot to be the same type of shot, like a close-up or all long shots. Uh, sometimes you'll want to zoom within the photo uh, or video, so that's a really useful tool. I just switched that from focus to zoom, and you control that the same way using this dial. Um, you can also zoom in and out using this button right here. Right here is gain, I'll bring that, gain, and there's three settings on there, low, medium, high, and that's another way you can in control the intensity of your light. So I just switched it to high. Um, white balance, it says white bal right next to it over there. That's another important setting. Um, Basically, when you start filming, you want to get a sense of what white is in the image. Oftentimes, the uh, uh, video people, camera people, will put a white card in front of the lens just to get a sense of what is white. And then your camera can kind of sense all these other colors based on that. Um, a and B are two options for you. Um, and on the bottom, there's a preset to what your white balance is and the camera kind of does that one for you. Up here is where you can use your audio inputs. I normally like to have some sort of microphone attached to whatever it is I'm filming. 
Um, this is the same with audio recordings. Oftentimes the internal microphone is not the best quality, so you'll want to utilize an external microphone of some sort. Right now I'm hooked up to um, this microphone. Um, and it's connected with an XLR cable. I can show you how to wrangle that later because there is a specific way you're supposed to roll those up, not just like an animal. Um, but I'll show you how to do that in a little. I also want to show you this type of microphone uh, my camera also came with. This is called a shotgun microphone. And when I go outside, oh, spoiler alert, I'm going outside later. But um, this on top is a windscreen. And let me set my camera down. Uh, it's important to use these when it's windy outside because it kind of muffles those um, wind sounds. If I was just shooting indoors, I would just have it without the windscreen. Uh, sometimes it's called a pop filter. Um, I'll just keep it on now because I am going to be using it later. And shotgun microphones are pretty useful when you're trying to get a sound from a distance. A um, few feet, um, quite a few feet away it works from, actually a pretty long distance. So if I was uh, doing an interview, I would want to utilize this microphone to ask my questions and then have the interviewee answer them. But for distances, um, with a distance, I guess, um, I would want to use a shotgun microphone. Very important. Um, something I was taught today, actually. So whenever you start filming using this camera, there's two slots for your SD cards. Right now I have mine in SD card slot A, but there's another option for another one that's B right next to that. I was doing a lot of filming earlier and um, I didn't realize that someone else's SD card was already in slot A and it doesn't really matter which one you use, I often use B. So I was doing all this filming and putting it in my laptop to start to edit and nothing was coming out. So, apparently, this camera takes priority over what's ever in A first before B. Um, so that's why I, I was not finding my clips that I took. So, always keep that in mind. If you are sharing a camera with a group like I am, uh, something important to notice. Let me turn this on for you, um, and I'll show you where that is. So to turn this on switch to um, off or I think that says yeah off I want to switch it on to standby and that's turning on for me right there as you can soon see hold on oh there we go so that's turning on my batteries in here um, you can release the battery hitting that battery button and it slides in and out um, but yes, back to SD cards. If you're sharing with a group or another person, you're gonna wanna reformat uh, your SD card slot every time just so nothing gets messed up between transferring from your camera to your laptop or whatever, wherever you're editing. So I'm gonna wanna go to yeah, menu. And then you can control using this button right here media settings and you can just click on it format you would hit slot a and do file plus management number and that will reformat everything there's two ways to start recording you can either hit record right here Ooh, sunny record right here or there's another record button right here on your camera there is one more thing i'd like to show you and that pertains to your audio levels this is a first uh, way to show good audio. Notice how I'm in the green for both my channels. Um, something bad to note though is if you're getting to be in that red section, which I think. So notice how there are some red bars there. Or if I start talking louder, okay, don't want to lose my voice, but. You just want to be mindful of being in the green and another important thing to note is you should be wearing 
headphones when you're recording. I went and got these close cup style headphones. They're great for audio editing. If you have earbuds, that would work as well, but as long as they have the aux cord cable thingy. So you're gonna wanna plug in right there. When I'm filming these vlogs, I'm not doing that just because I, I don't want it in the shot, but if I am taking video of someone else, I'm gonna wanna make sure that's in there and I'm listening as I'm recording. Let's take it outside and I will show you what some of these shots are looking like once you play around with some of these functions. Okay, so right now we are on Main Street in Geneseo. Uh, we're actually outside my house, so now you all know where I live. But I want to show you some of these camera functions while I'm out here, and I thought it'd be a nice day to do that. So, for starters, right now um, I want to go over the neutral density filter, and that's labeled ND on your camera. Notice how it just got brighter, and that's because I turned it off. You're gonna wanna have it switched on when you're outside, especially if it's sunny. They act like sunglasses for your camera, and it decreases the intensity of that light coming in. So if it was a little cloudier or overcast, or if I was filming indoors, I might want to um, have it off like so, but I think it's bright enough where it'd be beneficial, so I'm gonna keep it on. Okay, so the next thing I would like to go over is the zoom and focus. And that's right next to the neutral density switch. Uh, focus is on top, and that's what I have it switched to now. Um, now to control the focus, once it's switched up, the dial near the lens open and close switch controls that. So I'm going in and out of focus. Now, if I want to zoom out on this sign, I switch focus down to zoom. It's the same switch. And with the same dial, I can now zoom in and out, like so. And there actually is another way you can zoom in and out, and that's near the snapshot button on the other side of the camera. So I could go out and in the same way. However, I do want to say I do like using the dial because it is quieter and if you need to zoom in and out within the same shot, you won't hear that clicking like you're probably hearing now. So I think it is a better option. Now I want to demonstrate the depth of field here and that's the distance between these nearer and further elements in the picture. What appears close to us here is the parking meter, but by shifting my focus again, oop, wrong way, now that green house, which is my landlord's office, appears closer to us. It, it's not blurred um, like it was previously, so the background in a sense is coming forward. Um, switching back again, now our parking meter is in focus. And right now, as the shot stands, I would classify this as a shallow depth of field. So we have a smaller section of the picture in focus, and this is often utilized when we want the viewer to really pay attention to something. And this picture has a deeper depth of field because we're not just focusing in on one element or object of the picture. Um, Yes, it's still centered, and I can kind of off-center that to uh, have a better sense of uh, rule of thirds, but um, everything is in focus, so therefore it's a deeper depth of field. Let's work with focus one more time. Sorry, it's another parking meter. Uh, I guess I'm promoting parking in Geneseo. The village can cut me my check. Okay, anyway. Working with focus one more time, as we can see, the background is out of focus, but I can use my dial to easily change that so that car that's further away is now in focus and bringing it, or appearing to bring it closer to the parking meter. And now that car is becoming 
slowly more into the distance as it's getting blurrier. Oh, don't want to make everything blurry. Okay, I think I'll leave it off at that. Just wanted to go over some general camera functions with you guys using the camera I use for all these vlogs and other video assignments. If you have a question for me, uh, please leave it in the comment box. And thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, I'll see you guys next time. Have a great week. Corey, no. <laughs> I'm so sorry. You're fine. Done? No. Oh, this is my best friend. She's on her way to her day. I bet you guys thought I forgot about showing you how to wrangle. That's because I did. So you're gonna start with your XLR cable. And the first time through, it's gotta be like a regular loop, like so. Now this is where it gets complicated. I'm gonna take my hand from underneath this way and loop it like so. And I'm just gonna keep doing those two motions. So I'm going over like the regular way. I don't know, I call it regular and then under. And this is very important on um, any type of film or TV set you have where there's cables everywhere. This is actually someone's job just to be the wrangler. Uh, now I wouldn't want it to be my job. I'd want something, I don't know, I guess a little more exciting, but I'm currently seeking a job, so if there are any Wrangler positions, I am currently unemployed, so I'll take anything. And there you go, you have this beautiful coiled up cable. Yeah, great, awesome.